Hey all you super players out there, Ben Lodice aka 5 Buck Lunch, and today we're coming at you with some more previews from Set 11 Vermilion Bloodline. Uh, some interesting stuff today, we're going to get a bunch of unisons, a couple new leaders, and some new black cards for the new uh, black deck, so seems pretty interesting. First off we have Baby Resolute Avenger, it's a yellow unison. It's a 3 cost unison blocker permanent, if you have 2 or more yellow battle cards and play in rest mode, this card and your leader card both get 5k power, so it goes up to a 20. The end of your turn, switch this card to active mode for a plus one, and minus two if your leader card is yellow, choose up to one of your mono yellow battle cards, energy cost five or less, and switch it to active mode. This leader seems pretty interesting. It definitely seems to go with like the baby heartfelt plea type deck, but to get that effect for three energy is kind of expensive as well. So maybe like a later version of it, or like maybe like the more control version rather than the like hyper rush version. It does seem like a pretty reasonable just unison by itself that uh, two battle card a requirement isn't super hard and it basically means your opponent has to attack your battle cards before it attacks your leader or your unison or they're going to take some losses the vegeta Calfrey counterplay works very well with this too because if your opponent's going to play battle cards and try and kill your uh the battle cards you have in rest mode you can drop your vegeta and then it becomes a blocker to protect them or even a blocker that'll tap itself that you can use in order to uh have two or more yellow battle cards Seems pretty interesting. Uh, it's a blocker itself, which is really nice. So basically, it's just an overall like hyper defensive yellow kind of uh, unison. Uh, Dark Broly and Pargus the Corrupted. Let's look at the front side first. Uh, it's a black leader. Activate main once per turn. Add one card from your life to your hand. Then look at the top five cards of your deck. Place up to three black battle cards with 30k power among them in your drop area. And place the remaining cards in the bottom of your deck in any order. Then when it attacks, you can draw a card, and at four life, you draw two and flip it over. So this is real interesting. It definitely seems like the dark, the black uh, leaders in this set, they're going for a more overrealm-centric mechanic. And uh, this is kind of an interesting way to do that. It's kind of a targeted burst where you're sending three, but you don't ever have to send the battle cards you don't want to go. Like, you don't have to mill your negates or anything like that, or your super combos. So it's a strictly better burst three, especially since, as we'll see on the front or on the back side, it has once per turn place three black battle cards, 30k power from your warp to your drop area, then draw a card, and choose one black battle card with 30k power in your hand or battle area, place its owner's drop area. This card gets 5k power for the battle. So this leader is all about those 30k power, 30k power overrun cards which uh, we have some mirrors in the past that fulfill that requirement as well, as I'm sure a lot of the overwhelms we're going to get in this set also have 30k power. But it seems very interesting. It's like a targeted overwhelm kind of mill type strategy. It seems pretty good. Uh, we'll have to see like what new 30k power things we get and if it's better than simply running uh, like a Vegix deck. Uh, next we have Garlic Jr., which is a yellow leader, has Overlord. When this card attacks, draw one card, and then when your life is at four or less, or if you have a yellow use of card, the specified cost of three in play, you can draw one, untap one, and then add cards in your life until you have six and flip it over. So it has a regular four or less awakening, and if you have a unison three, so it's going to awaken on turn three pretty much every time. Uh, you can use the new baby unison, as well as, uh, I think, is that the only three specific required? We probably will get a Garlic Jr. like specific deck one as well. We just don't have it yet. On the back side, still has Overlord. When this card attacks, draw one card. When one of your opponent's cards attacks, you may choose one yellow Demon Clan card with energy cost of two or less in your hand. Play it in Rust mode. If you do, negate the skill for the turn. So this is interesting. So it lets you play a yellow Demon Clan, which we don't have know entirely what those are yet. But it basically just says when your opponent's card attacks, you get to put a card in play for free. Which, I mean, it's an interesting mechanic. I'm not sure whether that's good or not. But uh, it certainly is interesting if we have her, they come in with their skills on like intact, so it doesn't negate the skills or anything. So if we have something that's like protective that we can put in play with this, that could be pretty good. Or if it's just a generically, you get to put in more cards for free. It's weird that it's on your opponent's turn, but uh, yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, that's the front side, and then we have my favorite people for today. For today, Sun Gohan. During your turn, when you have a skillless battle card in play, this card gets plus 5k power, and then when this card attacks, draw one card, then add up to one card from your life to your hand. When this we are at four life or less, you may draw two cards and flip this card over. So it's a take a life, draw a card, 
uh, attacker. You don't have to take the life, which is important because in some matchups, I'm sure you won't have you won't want to do that. It's 15k if you have a skillless leader on the board, and then on the back side, you can draw a card and play one yellow skillless, one drop yellow skillless battle card energy cost of one from your drop area. So when it attacks, you get to draw a card and put in play your one drop yellow skillless, which you see there's more support for this coming. And when this card is in battle, if there is a monster card in your combo area, draw one card. So that's actually real interesting. It means there's going to be like a monster mechanic that goes with this, which is kind of cool and unique, something we haven't really seen yet. I mean, we have like, there's like the village monster that's like a generic vanilla and a couple other things. But for the most part, it's a really unexplored mechanic. And it goes through this unison, which I think is really good. Uh, Sun Goku forever in our memories. So it's a three cost yellow unison. If your leader card is yellow, all of your battle cards and all your opponent's battle cards with original energy cost five or less have their skills negated. And all your opponent, all your battle cards with energy costs of one get 5k power. So what this means, as far as I'm aware, what this means is it stops, it will not stop things in combo area or hand effects, but it'll stop any onboard effects, including autos when they come into play. It's not the same as the uh, Sin Shenron 9 drop, which where it selects it when it comes into play. It's a different timing. It's more like a... Uh, Oh, what's a good example of this? I don't really have a good example off the top of her head, but... Oh, um... Oh, what is the name of it? The King Vegeta 6 drop. It has the same wording as that. So, it will not stop any in-hand or, uh... Like, counter skills, I guess, might still not work because those are in the hand. But any, like, auto when it enters the field, those will all be negated. So, things like a boonie, um... And anything of that sort. Uh, for a plus zero, you have play up to two yellow skillless cards. Energy cost of one from your drop area. And then for a minus two, you have if your leader card is yellow, your opponent can only attack with one battle card, uh, with battle cards once during their next turn. So basically, it's a Nimbus effect on it, which isn't as good, but that permanent ability is really good. And if you can keep this thing on the field and your deck is built around like vanillas and stuff, your opponent's going to have a really like hard time at even actually playing the game. And yellow does have a lot of good un uh, unisons. Or a lot of good negates. So it's not that hard to actually keep it protected. It will be a little awkward because you can't play blockers essentially with it. Because your cards, five or less, will also be negated. But it means that your uh, your two yellow battle cards that come out will be 15k power. So that's three 15k attack for three uh, energy. So you'll be able to like wipe your opponent's board or just put on pressure. And then your opponent really has to like get rid of this before they can play the game again. So even if it doesn't stick around for more than a turn, their next turn is going to be really, really awkward. Uh, next up, we have the other black leader, Son Goku. Uh, auto burst three. When this card attacks, add up to one card for your life to your hand, then draw one card. Your life is a four or less. Untap one, draw one. So you have the effect of uh, the burst three with a take a life, grab one. So you're kind of doing a lot just uh, with your attack. On the backside, it has double strike all the time, which is really good. During your turn, this card gets plus 5k power for every 8 black battle cards in your warp. Which, as we have shown, is going to be a overrun mechanic with this leader. And then, once per turn, place up to 4 black battle cards from your warp to your dropper, then draw 1 card. Uh, I like this leader a lot. I think this is going to be one of the best overrun leaders that we have. It bursts 3 on the front side, it awakens itself, it untaps an energy for awakening, which is something a lot of the overrun leaders don't do, they draw and permanent double strike is very, very good. Uh, the ability to just get bigger with a uh, double strike for no reason and the ability to replenish your drop area for your overrun cards without having to mill more are like all things that uh, overrun mechanics really want. So uh, this leader seems like it's probably going to be the best overrun leader if the overrun deck is good enough to play. Uh, Super Saiyan Broly, the Rampage Duna Monstrosity is a new black unison. Permanent when this card has two or fewer markers on it, it can't attack. Place up to two battle cards with 30k power from your warp to your drop area. And then minus four, place eight black battle cards with 30k power from your warp uh, to your drop area. Then if your leader card is a dark rolly card, it gains plus 15k power for the turn. Uh, this is interesting. It is a black unison that is harder to get rid of, which is kind of cool. But it's not going to be able to attack right away because if you play it for one and plus it, it still only has two markers. I think they wanted to stop this from just being something that an aggressive deck just chucks into their deck and like plays with. But uh, it does replenish your drop rate with both effects, which are very good. So let's see. How good is putting 15k on our Broly Unison? 
Um, I mean, it's still just single strike, right? It doesn't gain anything big from it. So it, it's kind of got an underwhelming minus. I'm pretty sure the you're just going to be using this as like an attacking unison and as a way to refill your drop area. Unless we get something else that goes with that, obviously. Uh, Super Saiyan Forest and Gohan Beyond the Ultimate. Another black unison. It seems like they're really making up for the fact that we only had, what, two black unisons in the first set? Uh, auto, once per turn, when you activate an Overwhelm skill, add a marker to this card. So that's really good because you're going to be Overwhelming on most of your turns. Uh, plus one, place up to two black battle cards from your warping or drop area. So assuming that you go turn one, play this Overwhelm, you'll start with three markers, which is very good and pretty difficult to get rid of, even though it is a 5k power. And then minus three, add up to two black battle cards with power between 20k and 30k from your warped your hand. Then this card gets plus 15k power and dual attack for the turn. Um, this is a pretty interesting unison. I could definitely see it, uh, like, seeing some play, but it's still oddly weird because you're never really attacking with it, which is kind of weird unless you get the minus because it's only ever going to be 5k power and it doesn't increase, like, you don't get increased uh, power from anything other than the minus three. That being said, like, the ability to just get a bunch of markers and uh, put your black battle cards back is pretty good as well. So, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence on this one. A lot, All these black unisons, including the next one we're about to see, all seem to be, like, missing a piece, which is kind of weird. Like, this one is missing, like, a payoff. Like, it's nice because it's a 15k, so it can attack if you have get enough markers on it. But it doesn't really have a big payoff unless, you know, we get something that improves it. This really needed to be like a 10k and not a 5k so that it could actually do something other than just recur black battle cards. And then this one we'll see is a SS4 Supreme Saiyan Power. Uh, auto once per turn for leader card is black. When your opponent plays a battle card using a non-keyword skill, they choose one card from their hand and discard it. So it's got a black mass Saiyan effect, which is pretty cool. Uh, plus two when you activate an overwhelm skill. Auto when you activate an overwhelm skill. Add up to one card from your life to your hand. So the thing that this is missing is... In order to plus counters on this, you have to be using Overwhelm cards. Uh, if you, as far as I'm aware, because it's an auto like that, and we'll see, they might rule this the other way, but you have to Overwhelm to plus two. You can't just plus two and not do anything. And it's awkward that it adds a card from your life to your hand because all these Overwhelm leaders already have ways to self-awaken. So I'm not really sure why this is needed. It should have been draw a card. If it was draw a card, this would have actually been significantly better. Uh, the minus five active main for four black, which we'll have to see. I don't 100% know. I believe this means, it, or I guess, yeah, because otherwise it would have just had the generic symbol. So, yeah, you specifically have to play black energy, which I think this is the first time we've had that. Uh, active main for four black, send one card from your opponent's life to their warp. I mean, that's really good. Don't get me wrong, but this card's going to be pretty hard to like keep in play to get a minus five out. It's pretty cool, like, and you can't just pay five for it and do it right away because you have to pay another four energy. They made sure you couldn't just slap this in, it on down for five energy and kill a, do a damage. So that would have been really good. Um, but yeah, it's I don't know. I, I think this one's missing something too. I think all these black unisons are kind of underwhelming. This one is missing, one, the ability to attack, which it doesn't have, and then the ability to... Uh, the ability to gain counters without overwhelming, which it also doesn't have. Uh, the Black Mass Saiyan on it, though, is kind of interesting. It definitely, that effect might make it good enough. The fact that you could, in an overwhelm deck, you're not playing this for pressure, you're playing this for control. Uh, that could be interesting, but the overwhelm leaders look aggressive, so I don't know. Like I said, all these Black Unisons, I feel like, are kind of missing something. This one's probably the closest just because it has that extra utility kind of stapled on it. But we'll see. Uh, the, this could also be good if we get more ways for the Broly leader to, like, use that 15k power. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. You think I'm wrong? Uh, I think that this overall leader is good, uh, but I'm really on the fence on these unisons. Am I wrong? Am I not thinking of something that would make these unisons, like, really good? Uh, please let me know, because Overwhelm is my favorite kind of deck, and I haven't gotten to really play it much in the past, like, year and a half, because it kind of got... Uh, other than, I guess, maybe Toa, which I didn't super like that deck as much. Um, it hasn't really been good in a while. So, yeah, what do you guys think? What's the best card from here? I was a little disappointed we didn't get, like, actual battle card previews. Uh, I also really like this Gohan. I don't know if it's going to be good, but it seems like a really cool, unique leader, which is always really nice. 
Uh, so yeah, let me know. Uh, the Super Saiyan 3 Gohan deck building competition is still going on. So if you're not participating in that, please check out that video and participate in that for your chance to win a free foil topo. Uh, go out there, play some Super, and have some fun.